What's cracking, people? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today we are going to be discussing high refresh rate gaming, what it all means, if it's worth your hard-earned dollars, can you even see a 240 hertz display, for example, which is exactly what I have behind me here. This is the Asus ROG Swift PG258, and that's that's a long model number, so I'm just going to call it the PG, the pig. Well, we'll call it the pig. So we got the pig over here, 240 freaking hertz. Can you even see that? Or how does that even compare to, say, a 100 hertz display? And that's what we have over here on my right, uh, which is the Acer Predator X34 um, 100 hertz display. Both are, both of these are G-Sync uh, supported. So we're going to be comparing and con contrasting the two of those today to find out, is 240 hertz worth it? Can you actually see it? Um, now, before we actually get into that, I kind of want to just take a step back for those of you who might be new to this whole high refresh rate gaming thing uh, and just talk about refresh rate and what it exactly means. And I think we have to rewind a little bit further even and talk about frame rates first because oftentimes frame rate and refresh rate get confused and they're really not the same thing. So frame rate, which is often analyzed in terms of frames per second, is really how many frames your, your GPU or your graphics card can render in one second. And then all those frames get sent to the display via a display cable. We're using DisplayPort for both of these panels in this instance. Uh, and then your monitor determines how many of those frames get displayed to you per second. So uh, we have, um, or I, earlier I had CSGO fired up on here with uh, both of my GTX 980 Ti's in SLI. And we were easily hitting uh, the 300 frame rate cap. We were getting around 300 frames per second. Now, does that necessarily mean that your eyes are seeing 300 frames per second? No, it does not, because the monitor's refresh rate is actually sort of the limiter here, or the bottleneck, if you will. So even though, let's say on the, uh, the Acer Predator X34 here, even though we were getting 300 frames per second, at 100 hertz refresh rate, we're only updating or refreshing those pixels 100 times every second. So really, there are 200 frames that are not being accounted for, that your eyes never see. There's a bunch of lost data in that process. Whereas with a 240 hertz display, you're getting a lot more than you would with a 100 hertz display. And refresh rate is really just how many times a second, it's measured in hertz first of all, and it measures how many times per second are the pixels on screen being updated or drawn. In a way you could say that even if you had a super robust graphic solution like the one I, I'm running right here, uh, you could still maybe not get the best experience if you're limited by a low refresh rate monitor. Let's say a 30 hertz or even a 60 hertz display uh, could lead to uh, certain symptoms. If the refresh rate is low enough and your frame rate is exceeding it by, by enough, then certain symptoms you might experience could be uh, visible choppiness or perceived stuttering, things like that, uh, or the image could look blurry. And that's, you know, that blur is essentially your brain trying to make sense of uh, these images that are being displayed in sequence and trying to turn that into uh, the illusion of motion. Another issue that you could experience with low refresh rate panels is input lag. And input lag is basically the time it takes between a user's action, let's say clicking the mouse to fire your weapon, and the time that that's displayed on the screen. To provide a quick example, those of you who own home theater PCs that you've connected to your TVs may have experienced a significant amount of input lag, especially if you've tried firing up a fast-paced shooter. Not only is this effect super annoying, but since you're essentially gaming out of sync, uh, there's a disconnect that's happening in your brain that can negatively impact your accuracy or your precision while you're gaming, and it can really hamper the overall experience. On top of input lag, there's another symptom that I like to refer to as enemy lag, which is sort of a made-up term by me, and that's essentially the latency or the time it takes between uh, an enemy's actions, or maybe even the in-game environment's movements or changes, uh, and what you're seeing on your screen. To set up an example of what I mean by this, let's take a look at this mouse cursor that's moving back and forth rapidly across a screen. Let's say this is a 60 60 hertz display that we're looking at. Now you can see that there's several instances of that mouse cursor. You can actually see that there's uh, several copies, if you will. Now each one of those copies sort of is, is, is a point where the monitor has refreshed all the pixels on screen. Now if we do that same thing on a 240 hertz display, you can see that there are many more copies of that cursor. And that's because even though both of these displays are being fed the same amount of data, the 240 hertz panel is able to update the pixels four times faster than the 60 hertz display, which explains why we're able to see the cursor movement with finer granularity. Now applying this test to gaming, let's say the cursor is now your enemy that's running across the screen, and let's say he's starting behind a wall, so you can't quite see him yet, but he's about to run out from behind the wall so that you can take a shot at him. Now assuming you're gaming on a 60 hertz monitor, that means your retinas are receiving an updated image of your enemy 60 times a second, or every 16.66 milliseconds, so it would look perhaps something like this. 
At this refresh rate, the enemy almost seems to teleport out from behind the wall, giving you your first opportunity to shoot him in the face. Now, it's not that your enemy actually teleported, that's just how long it took your display to send you the data and the information of his whereabouts. Now, if we pair that scenario with a 240 hertz display, you're now being updated with your enemy's location around every four milliseconds or 240 times per second, which is why you can kind of see him come around that corner a bit sooner than you were able to with the 60 hertz panel, giving you a clear shot of his face a fraction of a second sooner. Now before you start saying, oh, no wonder I keep getting killed in CSGO, it's because everyone must have 240 hertz displays. That's not necessarily the case because in order to actually take advantage of that super fast refresh rate, your own reflexes need to be able to keep up with it. Essentially what I'm saying is the one bottleneck of 240 hertz gaming is you. That's why these super high refresh rate panels are often aimed at professional esports players who have lightning fast reflexes, where the difference between life or death boils down to a matter of milliseconds. But for the vast majority of us, I would say the real benefit of high refresh rate monitors comes more so from the visual improvements, like the added fluidity, the overall smoothness, the per perceptible sharpness that you get, more so than the competitive edge that really only those with super fast reflexes are going to notice and take advantage of. So hopefully that information is digestible and clarifies a few things for those of you who are new to all this, but before we close the video out, I want to quickly address what my own personal experiences were with 240 hertz gaming. So going from 100 hertz to 240 was a very slight visual improvement. I, I noticed a bit more sharpness, it was visibly more fluid and smooth, but overall I was like, why would I pay extra for this? And then I continued to game on the 240Hz panel for the next 35-45 minutes, and then when I switched back to the 100Hz display, it seemed like a sluggish nightmare. Okay, it wasn't that bad, but it definitely felt slow in comparison to the pig over here. Giving my brain enough time to adjust to a high refresh rate allowed me to see how slow in comparison 100 hertz was on a gaming monitor. Now that being said, I'm gonna categorize all gamers into three groups. Uh, and this is just my own interpretation. It's by no means an end all uh, truth or anything like that. This is just what I would think. This is my theory here. So I think there's a small group of people who will see no difference whatsoever going from 100 to 240 hertz. And then there's another small group of people about the same size as the first one who will see a drastic improvement visually going, uh, making that same jump. And then there's the majority of us who, who kind of fall somewhere in the middle where I would put myself that sees maybe a slight visual improvement going from 100 to 240. Now, that improvement for the majority of us is so slight that I wouldn't call it a worthwhile investment to buy a 240 hertz display at all. I think maybe 100 hertz is great because I think going from 60 hertz to 100 hertz for most people would agree that there's probably a bigger uh, visual gap there than there is going from 100 to 240. It gets increasingly expensive. If you go from 144 hertz to 240, you're paying more uh, considering that all the other specs of, that, of those panels are the same. I think professional gamers and those with super keen eyes are going to see the most value out of these types of monitors. And at the end of the day, guys, you just got it's, it's something that you got to try for yourself. Go ahead and see and experience a high refresh rate 240 hertz display for yourself and that's really the only way that you can measure how valuable it is to you because everyone at the end of the day with this sort of thing is completely different but that's going to do it for now guys that's uh, where i'm going to wrap things up and thank you so much for tuning in be sure to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it also feel free to leave your thoughts on high refresh rate monitors and gaming in the comments below very curious to hear what you have to say about it so that's going to do it though uh also feel free to check out bitwit ultra my ad free early access channel for a buck 50 a month the first two weeks are free so there's really nothing to lose you can back out anytime and yeah check out my merch store buy stuff buy one of everything and that's 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 it and buy and then do it again buy two of everything all right guys have a good one i'll see you in the next one peace